Um, I'm not sure to be honest. It's uh, just a, a nickname that's stuck. Um, I love I love the breed. I think they're a loyal breed and you know strong dogs. And I think maybe it's developed from there. Um, I've got a couple dogs myself. Um, rescued a pit bull once. Um, it was a dog that I took in. Um, it was a pit bull as well. So I think it has something to do with that. My mum took me to a Thai boxing gym when I was like, I think she took me to a karate class when I was like four or five and I was that flexible, I weren't old in certain positions and I got in trouble and cried and didn't like it and I never went back. And then about a year later I went to a Thai boxing club and uh, from like five, six year old and just went from there really. Like training be properly for about how many years in now? Pro two and a half, three years, almost three years now. But uh, I'd met him before, knew him from the, the kind of like the local scene because he's, you know, Peter's is similar, like he started like in Muay Thai as a kid and uh, then progressed to doing wrestling and then Jiu Jitsu. So it just all, even before like MMA was really big, it was falling into place that that's, that's the path he was going to go down. So uh, he wasn't too happy with the training he was getting a few years ago and he came over to me and we've just been working ever since really. He loves doing it, and uh, all the time, if you have a good knock on his door, work, he's always gone training, you know, things like that. He's, he's really good at it and that, and he does it all the time, doesn't he? Yeah. He lives and breathes it all the time. He really does. He's very, very dedicated. Anyone who has a good work ethic, they're going to go far, and he's, he's talented. He's got, he's good in a lot of, a lot of areas. I think one of his... The main things about him is that uh, he's he has the right mind for it. Like he can think about problems and think of solutions, and that is massive for this. Like you need to be able to think real fast. Like just do do, do stuff on autopilot more than anything. Anyone who's like trying to always solve problems or try to do things differently or try, continuously trying to improve, you're gonna get good at this. It's going to, you're going to be suited to it, definitely. So when it gets to the age where he was 14, 15, and obviously he was taking his self-training, um, and he was off on his bike all the way to, I think it was Altrincham, and doing a session and coming all the way back, uh, I knew then that the, the dedication, uh, nothing was going to keep Pietro away from his training. Um, and, it, and even, you know, when he was younger, that was my outlook. I was a single parent. A working single parent. Um, there was times I would have been better off on benefit, but that wasn't a road I was willing to go down. Um, you know, and when payday come round, the, the first important, most important thing was making sure that we had the money for Pietro's training, uh, his transport, uh, any private lessons, his kit. So it had always been very important. And when he got to the age where he took over himself, uh, the dedication was very much there. Hey, I've got the UCC British title. I won that. Uh, Bantam weight and then I won the vacant flyweight one, so I'm two weight division champion. Um, I've also got the UCC European title, which I've defended there, the two t and then next week I'll fight uh, for the FCC European title. Our gym is quite specific in that we have a lot of lightweight fighters, you know, from featherweight below to flyweight. We have maybe 20 guys in the gym that, you know, maybe five to ten of them are, are pro and the rest are amateurs, but they're ready to turn pro on the cause a lot of pros trouble, you know. So the sparring we're getting is, is so realistic. We're always getting lighter guys in the gym and, you know, everyone has different styles and it's nice It's nice that everyone ha does have a different style because then we come up against an opponent that's specific, like my, my next opponent likes to clinch a little bit and, you know, we've got a guy in the gym who's really good in the clinch. Um, so it's good that we've got guys in, in areas that are, are so well-rounded. Yeah, in the ring, yeah, it's just, you know, in the ring it's just the fact that we've been over it so many times in the gym and, you know, drilled it. It's just second nature. There's a split second where he, he, he instinctively goes for something and I do and whoever gets there first will usually get that, that, that specific position or, you know, it'll turn into a combination of positions or a combination of moves or, you know, I like to let the guy act a lot and I'll react to what... I always like to react. I don't like... I don't think it's more I like to react. I don't like it when people react to my moves. So I like to... So I'd rather react to their, their actions Granddad goes to every one of them. He's, he does. Yeah, I've been to every one of his fights, like you say, you know, and 
they had to support him and that, you know, and he, he, when he walks into that room, into that ring, it's a big thing, like, there's my grandson there, like, you see this other fellow walking in with his gloves on, think he's going to try and not knock two puddings out of my grandson, like, but uh, Pete, he's so good, like I say, once he gets in that ring and that, and you know, he loves doing it, so you just shout for him and back him and that, you know, and he comes out a winner. I like watching MMA fights, um, preferably when my son's not in it. Um, obviously, I'm a mother, you know, you want to protect your kids, you certainly can't at that stage. Um, I don't think I enjoy them. Um, I like to see him doing, you know, some good martial arts. I, I kind of, if I distract the fact that it's my son, yeah, I enjoy it. At this moment in time, if you ask me which my favourite win was, it would probably be against a guy called Shamsul Hack because he's a teammate of my next opponent. Um, so it's just sweet that I beat him. It wasn't too much of a tough fight, to be honest. I, I controlled the fight quite well and you know I didn't really kick it out of first or second game and I finished the fight. But just because he's a, it's quite sweet because he's, he'll be in the corner of my next opponent and you know they trade together. Um, one of my teammates just fought him again as well and four weeks ago it was both me and Mark Platts was in the corner against each other you know this I don't disrespect my opponent or anything like that but for about five or ten seconds we was looking at each other and I, I was just looking at him thinking I want this more I want this so I could just see through him I wanted it so much more and um, it was quite we were kind of looking over and I'm thinking yeah four weeks time we're gonna have our shorts on and we're gonna be going at it and it was it was a nice feeling actually I embraced it when I was in there and he didn't look too happy but his guy lost so he, he wasn't gonna Pre-fight when I'm warming up and stuff, I just go into my own world, I put my music on, I go into my own world, I you know, get warm, I just make sure I'm warm, that's the most important thing. Um, and then I just, just relax a little bit, um, there's loads of things going through my head, it's like so surreal, Stuff, some stuff that comes into my head, like what one time's like, we'll use walk my dogs, and, I, and I'm walking out and I'm thinking, why am I thinking that? And I was somebody, have I organised somebody to walk, I've locked my front door, I'm like, what are you doing? Come on, wait. Switch on you. You're going out to fight it. Most of the time, when I study the the tunnel, I just get that that, that exciting feeling slash nervous anxiety, fear, all into one. Everything's like rolled up into a big ball in my stomach. All these emotions, and then as soon as I walk out, there's nothing really there to be honest. When I when I when I get in there, um, yeah. So sometimes I think what when I'm sort of that tunnel, I'm thinking, what am I doing? Why do I do this? But then after the fight, I won't change it for the world. I do this sport for free. You know, I used to do it as a hobby, and, I, and if you if you give if you if I was stood at a tunnel and you said to me, right, you can go home now, you don't have to fight. There's no chance, no way whatsoever. I'd you know go through, go through with it every single time. I love it. Stupid man will, will say he's not nervous or he doesn't feel fear. I, I feel fear, but. Try and channel it and control it and use it to my advantage. Really acknowledge anybody there. You know, it's, it's quite selfish, but you're in your own world. I want this more. About to kick things here off against Mark Platt. Hold tight. UFC referee Neil Hall. Starting this one off with the final instructions is Mark Platt. Put him on his back. And this really is Pietro Manga's domain. He's already struggling here. Pietro Manga's currently on the wrong side, but he's looking to step over into Mount. 
Pats is aware of the danger he's in. He doesn't want to let him step through. He's already halfway there. And there it is. He steps over. It could be all over. Mark Blight steps out. And Pietro Mena with an incredible first round submission. Unbelievable. Pietro Mena is the real deal. Unbelievable work there from Pitbull Menga. Very patient. Guys watching here on the amateur side of things need to watch that. Calm, collected, patient. Just took his time, wore his opponent out. And uh, yeah, what a fantastic sub uh, submission to end up. Absolutely fantastic night here at FCC5, here at the Bolton Stadium. Uh, Rebo Stadium in Bolton. And oh, we're getting covered in Pietro Manga sweat right now, and I feel privileged oh, tastes good. to have the body juice of Pietro Manga all over my face. Brad, it's been an absolute privilege. Once again, we've had an absolute treat here. Absolutely. Another fantastic night for Full Contact Contender. Our biggest fan event yet. The entire show lived up to the hype as Pietro Menga embraces his coach, Jason Tam. Incredible performance from Pietro Menga. And what more can we say? A valiant losing effort from Mark Platts. Much respect to both fighters. Referee Neil Hall calling the fighters to the centre of the cage as we throw it to one... Final time to do the Miller to make this one official. So, ladies and gentlemen, after two minutes and 42 seconds of the first round, your winner, by half a final triangle, Yellowstro, the Pinto! There wasn't, there wasn't much going through my mind after the fight. I was just, uh, I was just happy that I won. And, um, I don't know, just enjoying the moment, really. Uh, jumping on a few of my coaches and you know, giving them big up hugs. And that's about it, really. You know, it was just, there's a bit of relief to finish the fight because, you know, you're in there. It's, it's dangerous. It's a vulnerable place. It's a very vulnerable place to be in there. You know, when you can get, you know, sometimes you can get quite bad situations. So it's nice to, you know, come out healthy and safe. And, my opponent come out healthy and safe as well. I've got a fight, got a fight planned uh, for June. Just waiting on an opponent. Um, I'll defend my belt. I'll defend my belt as many times as um, I've got an opponent stood in front of me. You know what I mean? If I was an opponent in front of me, I'll defend my belt, keep winning, keep improving, and uh, keep growing as a fighter and as a martial artist. That's the, that's what I want to do. That's what my plans are. Travel and train at other places and get different perceptions on on. The different sports and different arts and then the UFC are coming back to Manchester on the 26th of October so I cut my arm off to fight on that card you know they won't have to ask me twice to fight on that card I'll fight any of them guys on there whoever they want to put in front of me there's an opportunity to fight there you know that's what dreams are made of fighting in Manchester my, my own town you know it's a fighting city we always produce top fighters some of the best fighters in the world in boxing and MMA and you know I want to be on that list of go, go down as one of the best fighters City's produced so fighting at the MEN in October on the UFC card and that'll be that's what dreams are made of but that's the, that'll be the beginning for me you know when I win there it's just the start of me building you know I want to build a legacy I want to got big plans can't tell you the plans I've got I can't explain them they're in my head I've just got the plans over there just need to let them go.